we are discussing various parts or structures which are found in the buccal cavity in the previous videos we have talked about palate which makes the roof of the buccal cavity we also have seen various types of teeth various terms used and structure of tooth also now in this segment we are talking about another structure that is tongue tongue makes the floor of the buccal cavity of buccal cavity it is free anteriorly and it is attached posteriorly though it is made up of skeletal muscle but tongue is not attached to any bone made up of skeletal muscles but normally when we talk of a skeletal muscle the term given to it is because it is attached to skeleton so it is made up of skeletal muscles but not attached to any bone it is attached to the floor of buccal cavity with the help of a ligamentous structure and that is known as frenulum it is known as frenulum of tongue sometimes it is also known as frenulum linguae so this is the ligamentous fold with which with which the tongue is attached to the floor of buccal cavity when we talk of the structure we normally draw the structure with base which is little wider and the tip which is slightly narrower so this is how normally the tongue is drawn on the tongue are present papillae and these papillae are of three types three types of papillae are there the first they are called circumvallate sometimes they are simply written as valid papillae circumvallate papillae they are largest in size but fewer in number so they are less in number less in number their number normally varies from 8 to 12 and their arrangement is also peculiar the way they are arranged is in the form of inverted v arranged as inverted v that means this is and they are on the back side of the tongue so they are arranged in the form of an inverted v like this and as the name tells us circumvallate they are circular so here there would be these circular papillae and as the shape indicates inverted v like so let us name them these are circum valid papillae they are largest in size but fewer in number their number is least number normally varies from 8 to 12 and when they when we say they are circular so around that there is a depression there is a groove and the taste buds are present on the walls of these grooves that means they have taste buds but the taste buds are on the wall of that groove which is around this circular papilla the second type of papillae they are known as fungi form papillae fungi form they are swollen and the shape slightly looks like uh, the mushroom and that is why it is known as fungi form their number is more than circumvallate so they are more than 
valid, circumvalid papillae, that means their number is more, but they are not maximum. The maximum ones are the last ones, which are smallest also. And the third type, they are known as filiform papillae. Filiform papillae are most numerous. So they are smallest and most numerous. That means their number is maximum and the size is smallest. So largest are circumvalent, smallest are filiform. Least in number are circumvalent and maximum in number are the filiform. Filiform are conical. So if we have to just draw the shape, this would be something like this. It is also circular but the bulge looks like mushroom. And these, that is the filiform, they are conical. Filiform papillae are without taste but. So here we will write no taste but. Our tongue is responsible for various functions. One important function is they are gustatoreceptors. That means the taste buds which are there, they are gustatoreceptors. So if we have to just write down the functions, first function we would write that it is a gustatoreceptor. Gustatoreceptors are the ones which perceive taste. Now where is the taste detected? And before we write down that area, let us also uh, draw these two other papillae. Circumvalent are on the side. The fungi form, which are again circular, they are normally on the margins. And the filiform ones, which are like conical structures, they are in the central part everywhere and from the diagram also it should appear that these are the most numerous ones. So the ones which we have drawn on the periphery these are fungiform papillae and the ones which are in the middle they are filiform papillae. Now coming to the taste part as we said our tongue perceives taste and this taste is detected by the taste buds. Taste buds are found on the circumvalent as well as on fungiform papillae. These taste buds are chemoreceptors. They receive the chemicals which are present in our food. The posterior part, that means this part here, it perceives or detects bitter taste. So this area detects bitter or bitterness. The tip detects, that means this area, it detects sweet. And on the sides, this area is for sour and then the next area is for salty. So we are able to detect four tastes only, that is bitter, sour, salty and sweet and the areas which predominantly detect these tastes. For bitterness it is the back of the tongue, for sour and salty it is the side of the tongue and sweet is the tip. That These are specific areas but there are other areas that is all over the tongue we can detect these tastes but this is where we can detect it predominantly. So now we know the three types of papillae which are found on our tongue and the taste which we detect. And when we write the functions, the first function we have written is gustatoreceptors. That means they detect the taste. Second function, our tongue helps in mixing of food with saliva. Mixing of food with saliva. Saliva. This is another function. Third important function is that it helps in articulation of speech. We are able to speak or the words which, we, which come out, they are actually when the tongue touches various parts of our buccal cavity. For example, if we have to say T, 
ter or t word then the tongue has to touch the palate hard and if we are not able to touch the palate hard then that word does not comes or sound proper so it helps in articulation of speech articulation of speech it also helps in swallowing the food swallowing the food and here the food which we swallow is known as bolus so we will write the term bolus bolus word is given to the food which we have chewed that means after it has mixed with saliva properly so part of the food which we chew and mixes with saliva that is known as bolus so tongue helps in swallowing the food also one more function it continuously keeps cleaning our teeth so it acts like a natural toothbrush which is there in our mouth or in our buccal cavity so structure base is wider tip is narrower from the base it is attached with the ligamentous structure which is known as frenula it is attached with this structure called frenula which is ligamentous it is made up of skeletal muscle but it is not attached to any bone from the base it will it is supported by hyoid apparatus and three types of papillae are there and we are able to detect four different tastes and these are the important functions which are performed by our tongue so now we are done with palate teeth structure of tooth tongue and now in the buccal cavity region we will be talking about uh, salivary glands later on when we come to pharynx we will again uh, come back to this area when we talk of tonsils because at the base of the tongue there are lingual tonsils and ling lingual tonsils provide or help in defense so we can write that function also along with tongue's function because it has tonsils lingual tonsils which are lymphoid tissues they would help defending our body because they would fight with the germs or they would kill the germs which enter with our food so we can add that function here lingual tonsils help in defense so we have completed the structure of tongue as well as the papillae and the various tastes our tongue detects in the next video we'll talk about various salivary glands and their secretion